Unreal's newest update, Unreal Engine 5.7, just released and it is a big deal. The reason why is the brand new Nanite Foliage system, which revolutionizes the way foliage is rendered in computer graphics. Plants like trees are some of the most difficult objects to render because they are made up of many different elements. A tree can have hundreds of branches, and on these branches are thousands of leaves. This means a single tree mesh can easily be made up of hundreds of thousands of polygons, which are the flat planes of geometry that make up every object in 3D. The more polygons you have on screen, the longer the engine will take to render it. To create a dense forest, we have to use these high polygon trees thousands of times. Very quickly, we can end up with an environment with millions of polygons, drastically decreasing the engine's frame rates. To get around this limitation, developers use a level of detail where the object will switch to a version of itself with less polygons the further away it is from the camera. Trees generally use billboards as their lowest level of detail, which is just a flat plane with a texture. Billboards didn't look nice, and the transition between the mesh and the billboard was very noticeable in-game. Vegetation-rich environments used to be difficult to create before Unreal Engine 5. Thankfully, Unreal Engine 5.1 introduced Nanite for foliage. This gave us the ability to use Unreal's virtualized geometry system called Nanite on foliage, eliminating the need for level of detail and allowing for vegetation-dense environments, like this jungle. Every color you see is an individual polygon, and there are millions of them. Now with Nanite on foliage, we no longer see any ugly LOD transitions and billboards at a distance. All the polygons are rendered. But we still had performance issues on large forests because Nanite had problems rendering thin and close-together geometry as well as mass materials, which are what trees are made of. The polygons of a tree that is far away from the camera and occluded can still be rendered, even though it doesn't have to be, taking up unnecessary computational power. This is fixed in 5.7, with a new formal level of detail called nanite voxels. If a nanite tree is far away, it will transition to a voxel version of itself that is automatically generated. You can think of this as a 3D block representation of the tree, almost like if the tree was made in Minecraft. Now, only the trees that are close up to the camera will get the full nanite geometry render, and trees that are far away will transition to voxels, which are much easier to render than the entire tree. As the camera gets farther away from the tree, nanite will use less voxels and increase the size of the blocks. All you have to do is open up your tree and under shape preservation, select voxelize. We can use console commands to make voxel plants appear closer to the camera to see what it looks like in action. Here you can see how each color cube is a voxel. Nanite voxels also look better than polygons when far away. We get more accurate shadows and lighting from a distance, making the vegetation feel fuller and more dense. Voxels are just one part of the new Nanite foliage system. The other part is the ability to create trees, directly in Unreal, with the new Procedural Vegetation Editor. Trees have always been difficult to create, because they are very geometrically complex. That is why there are dedicated programs to create foliage like SpeedTree, which uses procedural generation to dynamically build realistic plants. But SpeedTree is a subscription service by Unity, and it is not optimized for the new Nanite Foliage system. Now we have a new procedural vegetation editor that allows us to easily create trees directly in Unreal, just like SpeedTree. With the editor, I can first start with a trunk, then choose how the trunks generate, and of course scatter leaves and branches across the tree. This is then exported as a mesh, ready to be used like any other asset. This greatly cuts down on the time it takes to make unique objects for your natural environments. All the trees you see in this world were created with the vegetation editor. A major benefit of creating trees in Engine is that the plant is automatically set up with dynamic wind animations. This allows for each branch to have their own unique wind calculation. Before this, wind animation used to be faked with shader math of the material. It was difficult to create wind animations that could dynamically change from the wind's direction. Now trees can be rigged to have their own bone system, designed to change from the wind's strength and direction. This is made possible with a new nanite skinning system, which optimizes and allows for trees with hundreds of bones, enabling foliage interaction on a massive scale. Creating and rendering large natural worlds filled with plants has never been easier than now with 5.7. Maybe the most significant new feature that gives us a glimpse into the future of Unreal is the new AI Developer Assistant, which is a large language model like ChatGPT built directly into Unreal. This AI can be opened up like any other tool and is trained on data from Unreal's documentation and projects. We can ask it any question about Unreal and it can even generate entire C++ and verse code for us given a prompt. Now, this AI is super experimental and it is not that practical to use just yet. 
The biggest problem is that it is not context aware and it doesn't know the code, blueprints, or environments you are working on. It also doesn't generate blueprints and has a hard time explaining how to create a blueprint. For now, I would treat it like interactive documentation. So if you have a question, instead of searching the web, you can ask it in Unreal, not leaving the program. But this does give a glimpse at the direction Epic Games is taking Unreal. Recently, Epic Games added talking AI agents to Fortnite and showed it off with a Darth Vader that players can talk to live in game. This created a lot of viral moments and was the largest use of a game character powered by modern AI. We can expect more of these AI features coming to Unreal in the future. The next major change is that we have fully switched over to Unreal's new material system called Substrate, which is no longer in beta. Now by default in UE 5.7, all your materials will be using Substrate, which gives us significantly more features to create lifelike materials. For example, one problem with the old material system was when we blend between two different materials, it might not look like it, but on this object, we are blending between two materials. We are blending a dirt material up here and a metallic material down here, and they're being combined with this node. That is how we currently combine materials, and sometimes, like right here, it looks terrible. This is because Unreal thinks this is one material. It doesn't know that these are two different materials that should be calculated separately. The reason why the transition is bad is because we are blending between a metallic material and a non-metallic material. Whenever we combine metallic with non-metallic, we get bad transitions. Here is the same material, but in substrate. It is a game changer because it allows materials to render separately from each other. Materials can now blend realistically. Here is the old material and here is the substrate material. It looks a lot better. The highlights are noticeable and the colors are no longer washed out. It is the next generation of material rendering. It still uses traditional PBR rendering, but it gives us access to more options previously unavailable. We now have more control over our materials than ever before because of this new layering system. Not only can we transition between materials realistically, we can also add materials on top of each other. Here are two materials layered vertically. At the bottom, we have a cliff material, and above that is ice. We can layer the ice on top of the cliff, and we get both materials combined. The layers are rendering separately from each other with their own specular reflections and shadows. This was impossible before Substrate. The downside is that Substrate is more complicated because we get so many more options to customize the material. Luckily, using these features are completely optional. You do not have to change your existing workflow or update your materials. By default, the material graph is exactly the same as before, except now we have this extra input at the bottom. If we plug a Substrate node, then that material output would change and we get to use these additional features. There is no sponsor for this video, but if you like it, make sure to subscribe for more Unreal videos in the future. Procedural Content Generation, or PCG for short, is now production ready and is no longer in beta. That means it is safe and stable to use in any of your projects. This fundamentally changes the way we make environments. With PCG, we are able to set rules to tell Unreal how to use random generation to scatter objects. It is very similar to Blender's geometry nodes or programs like Houdini, but built into the engine. The most popular examples of procedural generation is Minecraft and No Man's Sky. The worlds are not handcrafted. Each one is randomly generated from a series of rules created by the developers. To showcase procedural content generation, I quickly created this biome generator. Right now we're in a snowy biome, and with just one click, I completely change my environment. So now this is a desert, and then with another click, I'm in a spring environment with bright green plants. And the power from PCG comes from customization. So of course, I can increase the amount of trees to create a much denser forest. Blender's geometry nodes are a great example of the possibilities of procedural generation. There is a thriving community of tools made using it. Everything from trees to entire buildings can be generated procedurally using geometry nodes. We will see similar tools develop around Unreal's PCGs. In fact, the new procedural vegetation editor is a tool built with PCG. This tree generator would not have been possible without the core PCG framework. And LEGO Fortnite is the first game to be made up entirely of PCGs. The world is completely built using this technology, showing how it can already be used in games to generate worlds similar to how Minecraft worlds are created. So we are already seeing practical use cases of PCG in action. Now we can generate entire open worlds procedurally without manually placing each asset. There has been significant improvements to animations. Character animations are some of the hardest assets to create often requiring dedicated animators or motion capture artists. This is why it is important that animation can be reused and transferred between characters. 
Unreal's retargeter was already good at this, but it had issues when transferring between characters with extreme proportions. For example, transferring this robot's animation to a troll results in the hand going into the body. With the new spatially aware retargeting, Unreal is smart enough to change the animation and avoid the character colliding with itself. We have more control over our animations with physics world collisions so that rigs can realistically interact with the world and hair is now animatable, allowing us to switch between art directed movement and physics simulations. But body animation is one half of a character. Now we can also transfer face animation and lip sync between characters with the rig mapper animation retargeting tool. So a face animation captured with MetaHuman Animator can be applied to an entirely different character, opening up new workflows. Unreal is more important than ever because half of all next-gen games are being made in UE5. There is no better time to learn Unreal Engine than now. Luckily for you, I have two free courses right here on YouTube that will teach you the basics of Unreal. In the first beginner course, you will learn how to create this castle environment you see right now. And in the second tutorial, you will program your first video game. You can check out both of them, links in the description below.